Hello everyone, I'm R. Welcome back to another plugin coding guide. So uh, since the first two videos were about RPG, I figured I'd make this one about RPG as well. So today we're going to be learning how we can set up a basic RPG region. For those of you who remember, uh, if you guys play factions or if you're playing Hypixel Skyblock or something like that right now, whenever you enter one of the regions, they'll just display the text on the screen. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I believe this one was requested in one of my comments, so here's to you. So uh, before I start, just another note, I'm using IntelliJ IDEA, you can use any other IDE. And uh, I've just made a fresh project right here, I've done nothing else. And what I've done is I have added the Spigot 1.16.3 library. That's what I'll be using today, but you can use any other library, uh, obviously as long as it works for you. Alright, uh, this is me here while editing. Uh, during the time of me recording this video, I realized I did not mention that I will not be covering configuration files like I did in previous videos because I find that it takes a little bit too long. So if you still want to have uh, configuration guides, you can take a look at the two previous plugin coding guide videos that I made. I covered configuration there. Not in that, but you can go ahead and figure it out on your own. Or if during the time that you're watching this video, if I have already made another configuration guide or you know how to do it yourself, then you can go ahead and do that or watch that video. But yeah. And uh, let's go right ahead into the project. So the first thing we must understand about regions is they are formed with a number of areas. And I'm just going to call these bounds. So the most common and the easiest way to implement bounds is two opposite corner bound, which is the one that you will see if you were using world edit. You have the wood axe, left click the first position, and you right click the opposite corner, and that forms a bound. So let's go ahead and start with the project first. Right, and there we go. We've created our main class, we have our main package, and we have the plugin.yml file, which is uh, in the same parent directory as the source folder. And then uh, we've got the three basic uh, fields needed for this plugin to run. And I've also made it to set up so that the artifact includes the plugin.yml as well as our main package. So. What I do here usually is I would like to create a utilities class. If you've watched my previous two videos, you know what this is. So I'll just have the first utility, which is to color a string. And all this method does is it colors uh, color codes, like N7 and, or N and then a number or letter behind to their respective color. And then we need another decolor method here which we'll be using later on and this just strips all the colors so we'll go ahead and do chat color dot strip color and then color the string first so it colors the string to convert uh, all the string into the correct uh, string with the color formats and then it strips it from all the colors so it's just going to be a raw string that is white in color and then lastly but not the least, we're going to have a message player method here. And this is just to send the player uh, colored messages. You can choose not to do this. Again, this utility class classes uh, up to you. But I prefer to do it this way so that uh, I don't have to spend a lot of time writing extra code. So there will be a few more uh, methods that will be adding this, but we will go through this later on. So, right, there we go. So I'm going to be taking a different approach today. Usually I'll have another project uh, made already and I'll just refer to it and guide you guys along. But this time I'm just going to go into this project and try to code uh, based on what I would usually do it on my own. Just so you guys can see how I think, <laughs> that's, a, that's a horrible explanation. So first off, you must understand that a region is made up of a bound. Today, we're just going to use the simplest form, which is just a cuboid, two opposite corners. So I'm just going to create a components package here. So we're going to be dealing with a bounds class here. So I'm just going to call this bound. And like I said, this bound is going to be made up of the opposite corners. So we're going to call this 
I'll make sure to import the right location here. Oftentimes I just press enter, but be careful. I'm going to hit the minimum location and the maximum location. Now what minimum and maximum is, is I want one location to contain the minimum x, y, and z values. And then the maximum to contain the max x, y, and z values. But you'll see why this matters later on. You can just call it location 1 or location 2 if you want, but I just prefer to call it min and max. So let's create getters and setters for it. And let's create a default constructor, so let's select none. And we'll have an extra constructor here later on, which uh, has different parameters. That's why this one doesn't work currently. Like this. We'll be using this one later on, but you'll see why. So next up, we're going to create our actual regions class now. So a region contains a bound, like I said. And it also contains the name and the description. So we're going to have a name and a description. And also what I want here to include is a raw name, which is just the name but stripped off all its colors. So it's at the simplest form so that we can store it in a hash map or something and reference it later on. And then we're going to have a boolean method to see whether or not it's a safe zone. There we go. So let's go ahead and create the constructor. When we create a region, we need the name, the description, the raw name, the bound, and whether or not it's a safe zone. Now, obviously, you can just use a constructor here like that. Just realize there's a typo error here. Just going to do that. But you, can, you, can, but you can just type this out on your own. And then for the raw name, it will be raw name equals the D color name. And obviously, we have to import this. Okay, and let's just add a getter for all these. There we go. Alright. And we'll just remove this one. Okay, so there we go. So now we have our bound and our region class. So let's go ahead and create the command that will set up our regions. So we'll have a new package here. And then we're going to have a command class. Alright, and uh, this is not necessary again, but I like to create an extra uh, class for the command. Implement command executor or command executor. We're going to have a protected main class because we're going to need to be referencing uh, other stuff from it. And then we'll need the main class and the name of the command in this constructor. So we'll assign the main instance to the variable. And then we'll get the command by its name and set the executor to be this. So what this uh, line does is it tells the plugin that hey, I want this class to execute uh, all the commands related to the name provided. So, and obviously uh, when you do this, you have to go back to your plugin.yml and make sure you have the command that you want registered. So the command is going to be called region. It's just going to be a region setup or management command. You can obviously uh, add some aliases, R or, or regions or something like that. But this but this kind of sounds like reply, so yeah, I'm just not going to add any aliases. You can have some if you want, but that's all for this now. And then we're going to need to implement the on command method. And uh, we're going to return true, so that for, we tell the library we're going to handle this on our own. The command is always going to go through but uh, whatever we want to do with it, we'll handle it on our own. So let me just rename a few variables here so that it's a little bit shorter. All right, so for the purpose of this plugin, this is just going to be uh, executed by a player. So if you're going to send this in the command block or the console, obviously it's not going to work. So if the sender is a player, is an instance of a player, then we want to execute it. So we have another protector void it's an abstract method as well. It's just going to call it execute. And it lets a player execute it given the command arguments. So we'll execute. 
the command. Now that we know that the sender is a player, we can cast the sender to a player and then we pass in the arguments. Right, so this method, as long as this uh, regions command is executed, it will call this one. And then only if the sender is a player, then we'll start to execute well, whatever code that we want. So now we can make our actual region command now. Extend the extract class that we made just now. And of course, we're going to need to implement the constructor and the abstract method that we did. Uh, we don't need this variable here because we know that this command is region as uh, specified here in the plugins.yml. And then now that we have this execute method, uh, we run whatever code we want inside here. So the first thing we have to check is whether or not there are arguments. So if he just runs region, it's not going to do anything. So this can tell the player if there are no arguments at all that uh, we did this invalid command arguments. So it's going to have to type something after that. So if it does have arguments, we're going to check what the first argument is. I'm going to convert it to lowercase. So if this is the create method, then uh, we're going to do something in there. But if it doesn't match any of the arguments that we have coded for, then we'll just say unknown command arguments and then just add this there we go and just color code it nicely right so we're only going to be dealing with create here so up here first off we're going to need to create a map with a uid and bound it's going to be called uh, region setup. You can call it region setup map. I'm just going to call it region setup. And of course, we have to instantiate it. So we'll just assign it to new hash map. So what this region setup is, is whenever a player calls uh, region create, then he's going to go into setup mode where we'll have to select the two opposite corners. And then we'll be storing the player's UID in here, as well as the bound, which is the minimum and maximum of wherever he clicked currently. So if he's running this command for the first time, uh, aka he's not in setup, we just have to detect that. So if this hash map does not contain the player's UID, this means that he wants to go into setup mode. And therefore we're going to add him into the setup. So put the unique ID and a new bound class right there. And since uh, there are no locations yet, we're just going to use the default constructor. And then we'll just say, we'll just give him some instructions here. Uh, I'm just going to kind of type it out. Alright, and there we go. So. When he goes into the setup mode, we just tell him uh, three lines of uh, chat messages. The first line saying, uh, left click on the first corner block to set the position number one. And then right click on the opposite corner, obviously, to set position two. And then when he feels like it, he can go ahead and type region create, enter the region's name, whether or not it's a safe zone, so it's a true and false variable, is a boolean. And also type in the description, which is optional, that's why I use the square brackets here. So yeah, so when he goes into the setup, he receives this message and he will be detected in this uh, hash map. All right, so next up, if he's already in setup mode, put an else statement here. Maybe he went into setup mode by accident. So we can go ahead and test whether or not this is, uh, again, argument length equals to one. So if he types uh, region create again, then he'll be able to escape from this. So I'll just say region setup uh, remove player.get unique ID and it'll tell him cancel region creation. So, just in case he did this by accident or he didn't set up the area properly and he wants to get out of the setup mode, then he can type region create again and then he'll get removed from the hash map. And then uh, here, we want to test whether or not he has uh, provided enough arguments for the command to go through. So, region create. 
So this is the first argument. So one argument, two argument, three compulsory arguments, and there's a fourth comp uh, optional argument. So he needs at least three compulsory arguments, including the first one, to be uh, valid to go through. So let's say if this is less than three, So if he types uh, the region name and then he didn't type anything else, then this will be invalid. Actually, we can just send him a message saying invalid usage. And then we just copy this and just paste it here. Correct usage. And then we'll just send him the message again so that he will type it correctly this time. And then finally, if he reaches this last else statement here, it means that he has already set the boundaries and that uh, it is a valid command argument that has been given. So we can go ahead and grab the bounds here. We can set up dot get player dot get unique ID. Now here we have to test whether or not he has set the minimum and the maximum location. So if he hasn't clicked two blocks or he has only clicked one block or he didn't even click any blocks, then we're obviously going to have to send him an error message. So back in this bounce class here, I'm going to have a public boolean variable. I'm going to call this is complete. So is the boundary complete or not? I'm going to return min not equals to null and max not equals to null. So if the two locations are not null, meaning they are set, then this will return true. Otherwise, it will return false. So if bound dot is complete, if it's not complete, I want to tell him that please select the two opposite corners of the boundary. Right, so if he hasn't uh, settled the bound yet, we'll tell him an error message. Alright, the next step down here, I'm going to go ahead and grab the name of this command. So it's going to be, this is argument 0, this is argument 1. So there's a second argument, but it's args one. And then we can put safe and put equals argument two, because zero, one, two. So the second string here is going to be the safe and put. So is it a true or false? So first let's test. Uh, we can go ahead and do dot two lowercase here. So if safe and put dot equals ignore case, or we can just put top equals since we do to lowercase already. If it's true, then it is a safe zone. So we'll go ahead and put a boolean variable here. This safe zone. Safe zone equals to true. Else if safe zone equals ignore case. Sorry, safe input dot equals ignore case. False then save zone equals to false. So if he types true, then we know that the save zone is true. If he doesn't want it to be save zone, it will be false. But if he doesn't type either of these, then I'm just going to send him a message saying that uh, there's an error. Please specify true or false. Let's going to do some color coding here. For the region to be a save zone. Okay, this, this sentence, now that I'm looking back at it, it doesn't really make much sense, but you can change the message if you want. So, I'm going to return after that because there's an invalid input. So, at the very end here, we have the name, safe input, uh, the safe zone boolean as a uh, pass from this input. And then lastly, we need to see whether or not he has any description. So, we're going to have a string builder here. And then we're going to start from the fourth argument. So this is argument one, and then argument two, then argument three, and this is argument number four. So we're going to start from the fourth argument. As long as it's lesser than arcs.length, that's what equals an i++. But then, as you know, uh, with arrays, Instead of counting 1, 2, 3, it starts from 0, 1, 2. So when building the uh, when building the description, you have to use arcs i minus 1. 
and at the end we'll just append a space just in case uh, if it is one on one word description then we'll just add a space behind and now that that's that we can go ahead and find the description from the builder and then at the very end we realize that if it's the last argument there's extra space bar at the back so we're just going to do trim we're just going to trim the trailing and the leading spaces so it's going to trim this trailing space and there we go so this can either be an empty string if you didn't type any optional description or it can be a string of whatever he wants here so now at the very end here we can go ahead and uh, make the bound valid so what this means is remember at the start when creating this bounds class we have minimum and maximum and i said that the minimum has to contain the minimum x y and z values and opposite uh, vice versa for the max so we're going to have a new method here called the side assign correct bounds and this is going to take in the boundaries so minimum x equals to min.cat block x so you can, you can use uh, cat x as well but it doesn't matter since you're clicking on the block the curtain is going to be the same min y equals to min.cat block y min z equals to min.cat block z and we're going to have this for maximum as well so let's do that real quick all right so now we have the three variables for the minimum x y z and the maximum x y z and now we have to check whether or not this is actually the minimum and this is actually the maximum so how we check it is if this is truly the minimum it should not be bigger than the maximum so if minimum x is actually larger than the max x then this variable should actually be the maximum and this variable should be the minimum so first of all we'll store a temporary x value to store the minimum x and now we can change the minimum x to the max x since max x is smaller than it we'll just uh, swap the variables place and then assign max x back to 10x so uh, temp x equals to min x and then uh, this stores the min x value so this stores the maximum value and assign the maximum value to that and then before that we're going to assign the minimum value which was previously stored max x to this sounds confusing i know but essentially what this does is if this is actually the maximum and this is the minimum it will swap both their uh, values to the correct variable and now this is for the x value we're going to swap this for the y and the z as well so let's just do this again And there we go. So we have one for x, one for y, and one for z. And the very uh, at the very last step here, finally we can assign minimum to the correct location with the correct x, y, and z values. So we get the previous world this was there. Set min x and y z. And we have this for maximum as well. Get maximum max y, max z, and max x. So make sure to type those correctly and there we go so now that that's complete uh we're gonna go back to the region command class and over here we can finally do dot assign correct bounds so finally once he completes the setup we're gonna change the two locations to store the correct values that we want so that it's easier to uh, use those values later on as you see and lastly at the very end here we're gonna go ahead and do the region setup right here and then we can go ahead and uh, get him out of the setup so move here to get unique id and we're just going to send him some debug messages so right now over here we need to go ahead and create the new region so let's go ahead and make a managers package and we're going to call this new class region manager so this class is going to be managing all the region servers so going to sort the regions by the name which is a string and the region class and call this regions and we're going to add a getter for it and then we're going to add a new method here public void create new region 
and just takes in the name description whether or not it's a safe zone the bound that is in all right so now we can go ahead and make the region here so region region equals a new region then we need the name the description the bound whether or not it's a safe zone and then we also need to put it into this hash map to register it so that we can keep track of the of all the new regions so the color this name first and we'll put it to lowercase as well let's just pop this real quick All right, and now we can go back here and then just add the region manager in the main class so that our other managers can, our other classes can assess it. So actually this can just be equals to main region manager. Add a getter right here. Uh, we'll also need to instantiate the region command class here for our edit. CMD is region, CMD class and then we'll add a new gather right here right and now back here you can go ahead and add a regions manager variable and we'll pull it from the main class so main dot get region manager and then down over here we can go ahead and do if region manager dot get regions so we'll get all available regions and if it already contains the key then we'll go ahead and do the decolor name right here. So decolor this name. And then put it to lowercase. So if it already exists, then obviously you have to print out an error message. So uh region and then put a the name there. Already exists. There we go. So otherwise, if it doesn't exist, we go ahead and create a new region and we just pass in the variables that we have set up so far as well as the bound right there and there we go so this should be it for the commands class right so next up we're going to be creating the listeners well actually there's only one listener but uh, it's going to be called the region listener and this is going to be listening to any uh, events related to the region setup and obviously moving in and out of the region so first we're going to need the main class here main and then uh, actually we don't need this main class we just need the region manager region manager as well as the region commands uh cache map right here so we're going to call this your id found um, region setup so in the constructor we're going to need the main class and then uh, we'll pull in the region manager from this so main target region manager then for the region setup, we'll pull in the region commands or uh, region setup. So back here, you're gonna have to put a getter down here. I'll just have IntelliJ create it for me because I'm lazy to type. There we go. And then there we go. So later on here, we have a new method, but uh, we'll show that later on. So down here now, we're gonna need that event handler tag and then we're going to do on block uh, actually on interact and this will be a player interact event and this will test whenever the player left clicks or right clicks a block and he is currently set up so script the player here let's check whether or not he's in the region setup so if it doesn't contain the key it means it's not in the setup and therefore we don't care so we just return we just uh go back right here we don't really care and then next up, if he is in there, then we'll get the bound. Dot get player dot ID. Alright, and then we'll go ahead and grab the block that he's clicking at. Oh, that's the wrong import. Okay, make sure to put the card import in, get clicked block. And then if you hover over this, you'll realize that the get click block it can be null, so it is nullable, and that's because play interact events. Uh, you can be interacting at a at a block. You can be interacting in the air, 
an entity, so and so forth. So I'm gonna check whether or not this is now. So if block is equal to now, then obviously he didn't click at a valid block, so we won't care about that. But if he did click at an a valid block, we need to check what type of click it is. Is it a left click or a right click? So we do the event dot get action. And then if it's a left click block, then this will be the region setup for the first block. So we'll do bound dot set minimum and then block the get location and then just tell him or her uh, location one set just color code this because why not and then else if it's a right click block then it'll be the next boundary location which is dot set max instead of minimum and I'm just going to tell him location to set now we don't actually want to destroy the block that he clicks at so we're gonna have to do set cancel true for both of this let's paste that right there and there we go so by this time it should be done so let's go back to the main class and let's register this so get server dot get plugin manager dot register events and we we'll create this new class here And I just have to say here, it is important uh, which the flow of which one comes first. So this one has to come first because the region manager has to create the hash map. And then this one has to come next because it's going to pull the hash map from the region manager. And after this is created, then we can create the region listener, which pulls from this region manager as well as the region command. So yeah, so the, uh, the order of which one comes first does matter. So if you follow this one, you should be fine. And now we can go ahead and build it and uh, I'll see you in the server. Right, uh, we're back in the server. So you can see that I've constructed a small little, okay, this is not even considered showcase area, but I've created, you can see this boundary here. So there's gonna be one uh, region and this is gonna be the other region. So it's gonna be side by side. And the boundaries are marked with the concrete, obviously. So the green one are the opposite corners and the yellow one through. And, uh, set up in a way to show that you can click on any two boundaries as long as they're at the opposite corners and so set it correctly so now if we do region create there we go the chat message appears so left click on the graph corner set position one right click for position two two then once you're done do the region create command so left click and you can see that the chat says location one set so you can left click anywhere else and you set it to that and then if you right click here at this last block we'll go location to set i'm not actually sure yeah i'm not sure why it sends to message but it shouldn't affect so once we're done i'm going to do region create let's just try something that is wrong here there we go invalid usage so we'll just call this region one is it a safe zone or is it not since it's green we we'll just say it's a safe zone you can put two blah 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 that's wrong so description optional they go please specify true false try to be a safe zone so like that and give it a description because why not we get gray color hello there we go create a new region region one white in color description gray color hello is it a safe zone true now that's cool and all and now i can break blocks again because i'm outside the setup but it would be nice if you have some visual to see if you're actually selecting this correctly. So let's go back into the uh, IDE to set up the visuals. Right, we're back in the IDE and I said we wanted to set up a visual to see, to let players visually see what kind of bound they're creating. So what I've thought of is we can highlight the boundary of where we click and start it with some sort of particle so that it'll look nice and indicate where you have set it up. So, down here in the region command class, and in the region listener class, up here you can see I left a new line if you remember. For those of you who realize I left a new line, that's because we need to create a new runnable. And we want these particles to appear okay, not too much, so I'll just say 5L. So there are 20 ticks in a Minecraft second, and I'm doing this every 5 ticks. So, about four times a second this the particles are spawn four times a second because 20 divided by five is four math is hard but anyways we're going to be using the run method here so it's going to run this method 
4 times a second because we specified 5L out of 20 sec uh, 20L. So in here we're gonna need to check where we're gonna set up. So for UID UID we can set up dot key set. So iterate over whoever's in the setup. And then first of all, we need to see whether or not they are online. So bucket dot get player UID. If this is now, meaning they are not online and bucket couldn't find them, return. So we don't really care. But actually, just will be continue. Right. But if they are online and they are in the setup, then we go ahead and grab their bounds. So we just set up dot get UID. And then if this is not complete, we need to haven't click two opposite corners yet, or haven't even click any corners yet, then we don't really care. But if they have this, but they have specified two corners, then we can go ahead and set up the boundary. So for integer i, I'm just gonna go ahead and type this out. So uh, yeah. Alright, so back, you can see that here I've created a new boundaries class based on the two boundaries that he clicked. And I went ahead and assigned the current bounds for that one so it doesn't modify the current bounds class that he has. And then I looped over from the minimum x to the maximum x, and so on and so forth for the x and y, uh, x, y, and z values, and they are nested in each other. And what this does is it goes ahead. And what this does is it will loop over each block in, in between the two corners. So at the very end, here we're going to have to take a look whether or not this is at the boundary. So if x is equals to min.get.x, so obviously there are six sides to a cuboid, so we're going to need six of these. So if x is minimum or at the maximum, or y is at the minimum or maximum, or z is at the minimum or maximum, then we'll go ahead and continue with this. So I'll just go ahead and type this out here. There we go. So if any of these value suffices, so if any of the coordinates are at the boundaries of their selection, then we'll go ahead and do player dot uh, spawn particle. Uh, I'd like this to be a villager happy one. So it's the nice little green particles. And then at the location where they're at, so we'll just put uh, the x, y, and the z values that we have, and then the last one is just the number of particles to spawn. One. If you're not sure, you can go ahead and hover over this method, and it will show you the parameters in the Java docs. And that should be it. So now, if we go ahead and build this and go back to the server and take a look, right? I'm back, and let's go ahead and do the region creation now. So if we left click here. Nothing happens because we haven't set that out of boundary yet. But if we set this up, you can see that there's a slight problem here and that, that it's one block short from the actual boundaries. And this is correct because the way we set it up is we made it loop from the very minimum all the way to the maximum. But the way coordinates work is they are at the zero zero, so it's in between there. So the particles actually spawn in between there. But we want it to go one block cross to here. So we're going to have to add a plus one at the very back. So we'll do that real quick. All right, so back here, we just have to add a plus one because of the way coordinates work with the maximum value. So we'll just go ahead and add plus one to the maximum value. So plus 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 one here, maximum add plus one here. Oops. And a maximum right there. Okay, this is me here while editing again. I think some of you will realize that the whole Z axis particle wall is just missing. And that is because of one small typo error I made. Yes, coding is like that. I did not change the X to a Z. So I left it as X, that did not make sense. So remember to change that to a Z. You'll see later on in the video that uh, I did change it and that the particle wall came back on. I just didn't mention it in the video. So yeah, don't forget to change that X to a Z. I'm sorry. And this should fix it, so let's go ahead and build and I'll see you back in the server. Alright, so now that we're back, 
with that fix and the typo error fixed, let's go ahead and do region create. Left click this, right click that, and you should see that it does indeed highlight the uh, boundaries correctly. Very, very nice. So it goes around the top and around the bottom as well. And we can change it. So if we right click there, they will go ahead and highlight that instead. And if we go ahead and create it or uh, go out to setup, it will disappear. So perfect. So now where we have the region creation done, we need to go ahead and do the final step, which is to detect when the player walks into a region and do some stuff with it. So let's go back to the IDE. All right, now that we're back in the IDE, let's go ahead and finish up. Uh, I'm going to close these methods here because we're not going to use them anymore. So now it looks clean. And we'll create this method here, clock on move. So we'll detect when the player moves into a region. So like that, grab the player from this event. And then first of all, we need to check uh, against all the regions. So in here, we can actually replace this with map train region, all these regions. And then in here, we can just close that real quick. We can go ahead and do regions because of this dot get regions. So we'll assess the same hash map instance in the region manager. And then down here, we first need to check uh, where the players are first. So we'll need another hash map here. Region. This will be player region. Or we can call it player location or whatever we want. So we can call it player region. New hash map instance. So we need to get where the player was currently at. So the last known location of the player. We'll grab it from this. So it can be now or it can be a region instance. And then the current uh, region that he's going to be walking into. So we grab where he was and where he is walking into. So it can be now. Now means he's not in any region. Uh, if it's not now, it means that he is in a region. So let's go ahead and look through each region. So regions dot values. Okay, so here we have all the regions. And then uh, active as we assign to null first. And then region. If region dot get bound dot. And then here we need another uh, method here to check whether or not the player is within the bounds. So let's go back to the bounds class. Uh, I'm just going to close this up because it takes a lot of space. All right, another Boolean method here called is within bounds. And have a location. All right, make sure it's the correct and part of location. And then we're gonna do let's open this up first and let's grab that and then do this. And then obviously with the coordinate problem, we're gonna add one to the maximum values. Like I said. Then now we can go ahead and grab the x, y, and z values of the player. So get x, get y, get z, and get z, what I'm going to call it. And then we have to check whether or not he's within these bounds. So if x is more than or equal to min x, and x is less than or equal to max x, so if he's within the x boundaries, and we have to do this for the y and the z values as well, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Right, there we go. So if he's, if his next coordinate is within the boundaries, so more than min, less than it equals to max, more than it equals to min, less than it equals to max, and this is true for his y and the z locations as well, then he is within the boundaries. If not, he is not. So we can go back to our regions listener here. Let's complete this command. This within bounds. Going to player dot get location. So if he's not within the bounds, then obviously we don't care, right? But if he is within the bounds, then we know that he is currently in this region. So he was either already in this region or is currently moving into this region. So that's that. 
And then first of all, we need to check whether or not he's already in the region. So because if he's already in the region, we don't want to flash him another text again because then every time he moves his mouse or he press WASD, he's just going to get spammed. So the current is equals to region. So if he was already in the region, we don't really care. Alright, then uh, here we can go ahead and flash in the text. So what I like to do here is I go back to my utilities class. And you can see here, just now I told you we're going to have to add a new... No, not really have to, this is uh, this is optional, but I like to have it in my utilities class. Because usually I use this method in other classes as well. And it really saves some time if I do this. So a title is going to be consisting of a string title, the subtitle, the fade in time and ticks the staying time in ticks, and the fade out time in ticks. Then we just do player.send title. So we'll call it a title. Call it a title. That's not how I spell subtitle, oh my god. Right, then uh, fade in in ticks. Then it's the stay, and then a fade out I believe. If you're not sure, you can always hover over this, and if you link the Java docs or you downloaded it, then it will show you Hello, IntelliJ. Okay, there we go. Title text, subtitle text, fade in time, and ticks. Defaults are 10, 70, 20. So if you're not sure, you can always put these three values as 10, 70, 20. That way it's the same as the vanilla one. But it's fade in, stay, and fade out. And then next up, we're going to have another method here called sound player. It's going to play a player sound. And uh, this is only going to be for the player. So no one else is going to hear it. Only the player is going to hear bing bing bong or something else maybe an ender dragon growl if you want it but float volume float pitch the player dot play sound at the player's location sound volume pitch and again if you're not sure which one comes first you can just hover over this method and we'll show you the parameter so volume first and pitch so volume and pitch right so back in the region listener We'll go ahead and title the player first. So we'll send him a nice little title. Uh, send him the, the region's name. So region.getName. Alright, then the region's subtitle is going to be uh, the region subtitle. The subtitle is going to be the region's description. The fade in, I'm just going to put uh, a 10, maybe a 50 and a 10. Okay, maybe a 15, 50 and a 10. So that it's a multiples of 20. So it's going to take about 3 quarters of a second to fade in, 3 quarters of a second to fade out, and it's going to stay for a solid 2.5 seconds. And then whenever he enters the region, we're just going to play him a sound. So sound player, player, and then the sound is going to be the level up. But then uh, it's going to be the same volume, so full volume, but it's going to be half the pitch. So instead of a very high pitch, ding ding ding, it's going to be like a dong 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 or something like that. You can play around with this value. You can make it higher if you want, for whatever reason, but I'm going to stick with 0.5, you'll see it later on. And then lastly, after he finishes moving, we're going to update wherever he's at. So, where he was previously, uh, previously we want to set it to where he currently is at, so we'll update whatever region he's at. Or if he's not in any region, then it's going to be now. So, there we go. And that should be it for the region detection of the player moving in. Now, if you read realize back in the region class I have this really nice uh, boolean cut save zone it's kind of subtle I didn't really talk about it but just a little extra so if this region is going to be a save zone obviously players can't take damage so we need an on damage event entity damage event so uh, this is called whenever any entity is damaged in an armor stand a bat a player so therefore we have to check whether or not the entity is an instance of a player if it's not an instance of a player, we don't really care. But if it is an instance of a player, let's go ahead and cast it to a player. And first of all, we have to get whatever region is in. So region region equals to player region dot get player dot get unique ID. And if the region is not now, so he's actually in a region and not like in a wilderness or whatever. And if the region is a safe zone, then obviously he can't take damage. So just the event dot set cancel true. So if he gets damage, the event will never happen if he's in the safe zone. Alright, and that should be it. You can go ahead and build this plugin now, and then I'll see you back in the server. 
Okay, all right, we're back in the server now. So let's go ahead and create the region. So left click, right click right there. And we're just going to call this save zone since it's a green in color. Give it a nice little green color. Uh, this is true since it's a save zone. And we'll just say, you can't take damage here. All right, there we go. And then we can go ahead and enter this. There we go, you hear the player ding, and it's at half the pitch, and we can walk out and we can walk back in. There we go. So if you have some random person, there's especially that one person that would just... Because why not, am I right? And you're just going to do that over and over again to get the sound. I, th I think we all do that, but okay, I digress. Uh, we'll go ahead and create this next region here which is not going to be a safe zone, so we'll just do region create. Uh, we'll just call this normal. And then it's not a safe zone, normal area. Oof. Alright, so if you walk into this, alright, and you can see that it also works if you have side by side uh, regions. So if you walk in here, safe zone, normal, safe zone, normal. Now you can always set it so that only say don't have that thing or something like that, you can always change it to your want, however you want rather. But if I am in the save zone and I try to lava myself, I'm practically immune. I don't have fire resistance or anything, but you can see that if I walk out of the save zone, I immediately start to take damage. And if I walk back in, I don't take damage at all. So I can practically just summon, say, the spider here. And it's just not going to be able to damage me at all. That's kind of cute. But if I walk out, then oof, I'm going to take damage. Because it's a normal area. So yeah. Right, so if you guys enjoyed, uh, feel free to smash like, comment. If there are any questions, just leave it down in the comments. I'll try to answer some of them. And uh, subscribe if you want to see more content like this that I post once every year. <laughs> I try my best, guys. But yeah, this is the basic way to set up regions. And... Yep, if you made it this far, have a nice day. I'll see you in the next one.